Hello and welcome to this week's webinar on the Microsoft Power Platform, the iTrack 365 system. Today will be in a continuation of our administration system. We'll be talking about system views, how to access the advanced settings, how to create that system view, and how to publish that system view. From there, we'll do a bit of QA, should time permit. Now, if you haven't watched our advanced find video yet, I highly recommend you do that as we will be taking topics from that video and implementing it in today's video. Speaking of the advanced find topic, we will be using that view we created in that video we made almost two months ago. If you go into advanced find, go into forms, and look at our view, we call it the webinar system view, our webinar view. Right, so this is the, the filters we've created where we say it's been created by the this user, Castle Marafi. It's been created on this year, one or the other. And then is there any cause analysis item attached to the form? That's the view we've created. And then we'll eventually make it a system view, which we see here called webinar system view. And we'll discuss how I was able to create this view. And what this view does is if I go into forms in the power platform, right? We kind of have my personal views here with Webinar Advanced Find, and then we have system views that um, will be at the very bottom. What a system view is, is the second any user, regardless of how long they've been using the system for, logs into their iTrack system, they will have that view set up. So the ones you'll most likely see on your side is you know, active forms, inactive forms, and my active forms. And then we've added a couple of ones that we feel will best uh, work with our operators. And this webinar system view is one of them. And if you follow the steps, you'll be able to create these system views that everyone will have access to. So the first step you're going to want to do is go into settings on the top right and then navigate to advanced settings like you would for user management. From there, we're going to hit the little drop down arrow. We're going to go into customizations and we're going to hit customize the system. Now I will put a disclaimer here that you will need system customizer um, security role. And a lot of things that are changed in this area um, can heavily affect the iTrack system. So if you're you know, gonna experiment, we do not recommend you experiment with this um, pop-up as you can actually damage the system quite a bit. Instead, if you follow the system and follow these videos on, you know, changing a view, sort of, you know, changing an option set, which we'll get into in the future, you're probably going to be safe, but we know we don't want you going in there, going to entities and, you know, trying to delete the entire account entity, for example, or even rename it, because that might have some serious um, backlash. So system customizer is very, very um, severe of a role. So we do not recommend that you play around with this um, solution that much. So once it loads, you'll see on the bottom left hand side here where it says entities, you're going to hit the little right arrow to expand the section. We're going to go down all the way into form, which is the entity we want to create the system view on. From there, we're going to go into views. And we can kind of see that we have 15 here, right? We have public views, um, advanced find views, as well as some lookup views, and these all mean different things. The ones we'll be focusing on today um, are these public views, right? So public view is a view that we've actually created ourselves, whereas a default public view is one that comes with the system out of box. Um, and then lookup views and other stuff sort of discuss, um, you know, relations. So the form lookup view might be in the employee section, and that might um, sort of show you forms associated to that user there. Same idea with the associated view. So these ones you don't want to talk about. We're just going to be creating these um, sort of public views, right? So the first thing we're going to want to do on the top left here, we're going to hit new. All right, so you're going to give it a name. We're going to call it webinar system view version 2.0. Hit OK. And the first thing you're going to see is that, you know, you're only really given one column, which is form name, which doesn't really, you know, provide you with that much detail when you actually open up the view. So depending on what you're doing, whether it's a fluid hauler spot check, 
view, whether it's an incident view, you're going to want to customize it to sort of the columns you want to see based on your filtering criteria, right? So we're going to, the first thing we want to do is go into add columns on the bottom right here. We're going to look at the record type equals form, which is just all the fields that are on that form entity. You know, I kind of want to see, you know, which team or user is the form is assigned to, right? Form name is going to be form number, so that's fine. We'll keep going, keep going down. I kind of want to see, you know, employee one, usually who created that employee, uh, the form. Keep going down, you know, form business unit's always a good one as well. Keep going down, you know, occurred date, and actually I'll go back up to reported date as well. Oh, sorry, down to reported date. And, you know, kind of want to see that status reason um, just to see, you know, if, is it active or is it inactive? And that's about it. Those, those are usually the ones that you're going to, you know, have on every every view. Um, obviously, occur date versus reported date is going to be a thing. Facility versus foreign business unit, um, you know, employee one versus employee two. But whatever the field is on the form type you've created, you kind of want to reflect it in that view like I mentioned earlier. So we'll hit OK. And you can kind of see that they kind of just pull up an order of selection. So I kind of want to put employee one. If I left click, you see the green square has selected over it. And you can just like an advanced find, you know, move it over to the left. So, you know, kind of really organize the columns in any way you want. All right. So once, once you think all the columns are done, that's good for now. The next thing we're going to want to do is go into edit filter criteria. And this is that sort of I'll open up advanced find again. But you can kind of see that, that the UI, right, is kind of similar. We're looking at sort of forms that's already been established. And if we go here, we can say look for created by equals. Right. And then we go look for my user. Select at the bottom here, then hit add. And we're going to go create it on. This year. Right. We're going to group them up here. We're going to hit group or. And then if you want to go to a related record like we did down here, it's just at the bottom of the drop down into related. We're going to say form cause analysis items. And then if it, it kind of understands that it says contains data, I won't say it here, but if you kind of selected it, it's, it's been established that the form cause analysis item contains data. So from there, we'll hit OK, right? And just to make sure that it actually saved, we'll hit up Edit Filter Criteria once more. And we'll see that that's, you know, it's the, the filters we just added are still there. And the next thing we want to want to do is, you know, configure sorting. And what this means is that initially, we're going to look at form name, which is also form number, and we're going to sort it by ascending. And then if, you know, if there's any duplicates, which there won't be any form number, you can kind of say, you know, then by employee one. So for example, if you were going here, you could filter by form business unit and then by employee one, if you wanted to create a view by employee, for example. But just for the sake of this demonstration, we'll keep it simple with form name. And then if form name is similar, then by employee one. All right. So, and then let's say, you know, we don't want to look at assigned to user. Once that green square is highlighted, we can hit remove here at the bottom right, and it gets rid of that column. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to hit save and close. We'll reopen that solution customization. We scroll down, we kind of see that it was created as a public view, which is perfect. Um, and this webinar system view here that we've created, we don't want to have duplicates. So what we'll actually do is we'll left click it, we'll go into more actions, and we can deactivate this. All right. And then the other thing we can obviously do is if we go here, open our system view, we can actually um, set set that to default. So whenever that new user comes into the system and they go into the forms entity, either on the portal or in the power platform, that will be the first one um, they will see. So much like in the advanced find video I showed where you can use a little pin icon on the view to pin which view you want to see when you open up the forms entity. This is doing the same thing just across all users, users in your system. All right. So once that's finished, you know what we see here, it's it's all good there. It's inactive. 
So we're gonna, this is very important as this will affect your customizations. I'll say this once again. So this button at the top here, publish all customizations is the one we do not want to press. What this means is it looks across all the entities in your system and then it will publish any changes that are being made. So for example, if I'm working in the you know form account system, for example, and I'm creating new records and fields in there, but I'm not finished yet. If I hit publish all customizations, it'll actually just publish what I've changed, which is a problem because you know that might sort of you know mess up the view for some people and might give people access to things that are still in beta. So instead what you want to do is you want to left click form. And this is very important, like I said. You know you're in the form entity correctly. If on the top it says form up here, and you can kind of see, you know, um, you know, name, plural name. And this is very advanced backend stuff. And then we kind of see that that top header changed. Before here it said published all customizations, which once again we do not want to press. We now see publish here at the top. And what this is saying is we're only going to publish what's in the form changes. So obviously, you know, if someone isn't um, you know, making customizations to the forms um, entity itself. We do recommend you do this in a solution, just in case something goes south. We can actually, you know, nothing's been changed to the default solution. We can just fix everything up in the default solution. Whereas if you go into solutions here, and I'll just go on a bit of a tangent here, and we'll get more into this topic later, we can kind of create a solution here that what this will do, and you know, we can create a new one, and we'll call it. You know, we can say, you know, Kasim's solution to make changes, right? The second that's finished, it has the same entity list. It'll have everything there and all the changes we make in here and we update it will not affect the default solution. So I'll leave that for now. And we'll get more into that into future webinar, right? So like I said, just as a, you know, final reminder, I know I'm being pushy on this, but you do not want to publish all customizations. You want to make sure form and information is there. Right, so this is the, the main page. This little publish icon is here. You'll hit publish. It might take a second depending on you know internet speed, computer processing power, and all that. Right? It usually does that every time. Looks like it's looks like it finished perfectly fine. Move it out of the way for now. And if we go back into this um, you know, kind of forms view here, we see the webinar system view is still there. If I hit refresh, open it one more time, we can see that webinar system view 2.0. So obviously the first time we refreshed it didn't show, um, and there might be that sort of delay there, but eventually it will show up in your views. And then if I go into you know iTrack demo Azure websites as well, so the actual iTrack portal. And from the iTrack portal, we can go into forms. From the forms page, go into view. And if we look at the views in the um, iTrack portal, we can see that webinar system view 2.0 is there. And that webinar view is the one that we created in the advanced find section. So in the CRM or the Power Platform, we can see it's separated by my views and system views. Whereas in the iTrack portal, they're all sort of just clumped up together. So something that we can usually, you know, see happen is someone's created a personal view. They think about it. Okay, this is actually beneficial to everyone, so they push it as a system view, and then we just have a bunch of duplicates that really shouldn't exist. So you really have to be diligent about that and saying, hey, you know, we created this once as a personal view. Let's make sure we delete that before pushing it out to a system view. If we click it, we can kind of see sort of the data will populate as we expected. The form name includes the title, which is nice as well. So, yeah. Uh, that's the entire webinar uh, this week. Uh, we'll hope to see you guys in two weeks where I think we'll be talking about Power BI and how to get your data set up. And we'll uh, go into that fun world of reporting. But as always, if you guys do have any questions, please email support at itrack365.com. Um, you know, or you can even give us a live chat on our website here. If you go to itrack365.com, at the bottom right, a little pop-up will open saying, you know, you can kind of send us your name, your email, your question, and we get back to you there as well. And just as a little tidbit, 
if we go into itrack.com slash learning, we can kind of see this is our landing page for all our how-to videos, administration, user management, itrack reporting, form building, expert demos, right? Case studies, all the videos we've kind of done, we've put them into curated playlists. So you're able to just go in and you know, look at administration. If we look at an advanced find, like I always mention, hit plus and the video kind of just pops up there, right? So uh, we will be sending out this uh, itrack365.com learning page and email very soon. We do recommend everyone jumps on it and, you know, really get to learn the system a lot better. So thank you and I uh, hope to see you guys in two weeks. So with that being said, thank you and have a great day.